Hello, beautiful brothers and sisters. This is Virginia. Let me open with prayer. Dear loving Heavenly Father, may you be glorified in this video. All the glory goes to you, and may your words be spoken, not mine. And may everyone who comes to watch it be blessed. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me present the gospel. This is the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You see, Jesus loves you, and he wants you to spend eternity with him, but that cannot happen unless you are born again. So first, repent. Admit that you're a sinful creature, like we all are. Then believe that Jesus is who he says he is, fully God, fully man. He came to earth, lived a perfect and sinless life. He shed his blood on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins, all your sins, past, present, and future, no matter what you've done. For the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. He died, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures. All you have to do is believe that. Believe it without adding in any of your own good works or your own righteousness, being good. It has nothing to do with belonging to any church, practicing any religion, or being baptized. The moment you believe, it's like a personal encounter in your heart between you and God himself, where you call on his name. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You might say, come into my life, Lord Jesus, or Jesus, I believe you, save me. Whatever it is, talk to God. And the moment you believe, you are saved. You are born again, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. He will indwell you forever because your salvation is permanent. It's eternal. You can never lose it. So I hope you have believed. Because if not, if you don't believe, you will spend eternity in hell. And nobody wants that. So please believe. Send me an email if you'd like. My email address is in the description box. Or you can leave a comment below. I wanted to talk to you today about dread versus abide. And also read Romans 12 for you. So I have to tell you yesterday afternoon, this huge dread came over me. It, it was palpable. It was about what's, what's going to happen in the world. And I know that many of you have felt this as well. And other people that I've spoken to have felt this dread. And even my dog Bernie was acting really strangely. He was scratching on the carpet and then needed extra cuddling. Poor Bernie. And so what does the scripture say about dread? It does say that it can come from God. Job 13, 11 says, Shall not his excellency make you afraid and his dread fall upon you? And Job 13, 21, Withdraw thine hand from me and let not thy dread make me afraid. And so the other thing that can make us dreadful, you know, dread is wondering how we're doing with Jesus. How's our relationship with him? And I'm telling you, I saw a TikTok video that, that really kind of disturbed me because the woman in it said, if you don't have Jesus as your personal savior and following the commandments, you could be left behind at the rapture. And that is simply not true. It has nothing to do with following the commandments. It has to do with have, being born again, like I just explained. And this kind of video, this kind of information is being spread everywhere on the internet. Be ready, be ready. Uh, somebody, somebody had written something to the effect that Jesus will always be with us if we uh, are trying to do what he wants. And this is not the Jesus from the Bible. The Jesus from the Bible said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the uh, end of the world. And this kind of fear rhetoric that's going around is not from the Lord. 
And so let's make sure that we trust the Jesus of the Bible. Because if you don't have the Jesus of the Bible, you don't have you don't have the only one true gospel either, because the gospel is based on Jesus. So, but then in my Bible verse a day calendar this morning, there was a verse about abide. And if we abide in Jesus, we're not going to be full of dread. And Jesus 15, 4 says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. And 1 John 2, 28 says, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. So it depends on what we stay our minds on. I could have allowed that dread that I felt yesterday to engulf me and encompass me and, and over overtake my abiding in Christ. But this, I thought about what does it mean to abide in Christ, which is really what it means to be ready. And this is what I thought. It means to be watching the Lord, training our mind to focus on him, listening to him, having faith in his promises, not saying, oh, he's going to be with us if we always do our best or something. No, he's always going to be with us. And also waiting in peace and joy, asking him to develop those fruit of the Spirit in us. All the fruit of the Spirit, actually, but to just wait contentedly, serenely, with your eyes looking at Jesus. And so that's what I wanted to share with you today. And also, I want to read Romans 12 because it has tons of gold nuggets in it that we can take and apply to our own lives as we continue to walk occupying the time until he comes. Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath de dealt to every one, every man, the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably 
with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Beautiful, beautiful scripture. Beautiful instructions for us all. So thank you for coming, everybody. God bless you. I love you all. If there's another video to be made, God will show me and I will post it. Until then, bye for now.